For this video, I'm going to be tackling an atheist argument against the existence of God that I hear very common. Very com it's a very common argument. Basically, the argument is this. An omniscient God cannot exist if we have free will. Now, on the surface, this, this, this kind of argument seems stubworthy, seems legitimate, seems like hard to tackle. It is a hard it is a hard argument to tackle, but it is an it is an argument that can be addressed. Now, before we begin this argument, before we begin this video, we need to we need to, we need to assume two things right off the bat in order to make this argument to work, in order to make this video work. For the sake of this video, we are going to assume two things right off: that we as humans have free will. Now, many, there are people who deny that we have free will. For the sake of the argument, we're going to assume that we have free will. And, we'll, and the, another thing we're going to assume is that when we mean by God, we are referring to the Christian God, who is omnipotent, om, omnibenevolent, omniscient, and omnipresent. The only attribute of God I'm going to be discussing will be omniscience. And I will only bring up the other attributes if necessary to make a point. So let's begin our let's begin by defining our terms. Omniscience. All knowing. And when we mean all knowing, we mean that God is capable of knowing of all the things that can be known. For example, God knows both past and future. How many hairs are on your head? What time I wake up in the morning on a particular day of the week, and so on and so on. Let's, let's define the second term, free will. The power of acting without constraint, or the ability to make choices. Now, that doesn't, now that doesn't mean that, that we have, I'm not arguing for libertarian free will, I'm just arguing for free will in general. Whether there's limited free will or libertarian free will, it doesn't matter. Free will, the ability to make choices. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start Let's start breaking this arg this atheist argument down. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Follow me. The basic argument goes like this. Premise one, a being such as a human being with free will, given two choices of A and B, can freely choose between A and B. Premise 2. God is all-knowing and omniscient. Premise 3 states, God knows I will choose B. Premise 4 states that God cannot lie. And because God is an omniscient God, he, he cannot possess false information. As a result, I cannot pick A. And conclusion states that because of that, omniscience and free will cannot coexist. There are a couple of problems I have with this argument. This argument never explains what it means by free will. It's very big on saying that man's free will contradicts God's omniscience, but it never stops to explain what it means by free will or even the nature of free will. It doesn't explain if it means libertarian free will or limited free will. It also never stops to explain if free will can escape the power of prediction. A, cl a classic example of this has, that has been used is a father presenting his son the option of either a bowl of ice cream or a bowl of vegetables. The father knows that his son will pick the bowl of ice cream, but that doesn't mean the son does not have the free will to choose the ice cream. Premise 2 is a problem because it only shows that God is omniscient. It does not explain how God being omniscient determines human action. I'll explain on this point further later in the video. 
Premise 5 is also a problem because it, do, it does not explain how choice B could not have been made because of God's omniscience. Many atheists would try to argue that because God knows all things, past, present, and future, then our actions are already determined, therefore making choice B impossible to make. This to me is not a satisfactory answer because like I stated before about free will, the argument does not explain what it means by free will and whether or not free will escaped the power of prediction. Because of these problems, specifically with premises 2 and 5, the conclusion does not follow, therefore giving me, as a theist, enough grounds to just reject the argument. One theist's response to this argument would be the use of a timeline. The theist would argue that humans have a timeline, and that timelines are recording of events of any particular person's life. Humans exercising their free will would be recorded on the timeline. If a human decides to make choice A instead of choice B, then the timeline would change. The theist would say that God is outside of time, thus is able to observe the actions you would make in the future. If God is outside of the timeline, then God can simply know whatever action occurs on the timeline. If we decide to make a contrary decision, then God would observe that as well. If the timeline is simply recording of events in a particular person's life, then that, then that doesn't make sense if omniscience and free will are contradictory. For if God is outside the timeline, then God would just be observing us of exercising our free will and making choices, not determining what our actions and choices will be. I'm not going to go into depth with this topic at this time due to the time restraints. If you want information and for a better defense of this idea, UNFF Wildcard has one or two videos, excellent videos by the way, on this topic, so I'll just post those in the description box. Instead, I will, I will quote C.S. Lewis instead from his book, Mere Christianity. But suppose God is outside and above the timeline. In that case, what we call tomorrow is visible to him in just the same way as what we call today. All the days are now him, now for him. He does not remember you doing things yesterday. He simply sees you doing them. Because though you have lost yesterday, he has not. He does not foresee you doing things tomorrow. He simply sees you doing them. Because though tomorrow is not yet there for you, it is for him. You never suppose that your actions at this moment were any less free because God knows what you are doing. Well, he knows you, you, your tomorrow's actions in just the same way, because he is already in tomorrow and can simply watch you. In a sense, he does not know your acts until you have done it. But then the moment at which you have done it is already now for him. I agree with Lewis here. However, I want to expand on it and propose something else. Now, here's what I want to point out. The difference between God and man is this. God is infinite, while man is finite. God is all-knowing or omniscient, while man has only limited knowledge. With this in mind, I'd like to propose the following as a response to the so-called omniscience versus free will paradox. Here's my argument. Premise 1. In order for an omniscient God and human free will to coexist, both must have, a, must have a characteristic that the other does not have. Premise 2. God's characteristic is that he is infinite. Premise 3. Man's characteristic is that he is finite. Premise 4. Because God is infinite, he is therefore omniscient. Premise 5. Because man is finite, then man is not omniscient. Premise 6. Man has free will, while God is omniscient. In conclusion, an omniscient God can coexist with man's free will. A possible objection to this argument would be that the atheist would bring up the idea that human beings throughout history have been known to commit evil deeds. Because certain human beings have caused actions that many people would deem as evil, the fact that God knows that these deeds would happen not only means that omniscience contradicts man's free will, but that God has knowingly determined that these events will happen. To explain this objection, let's imagine a scenario. Imagine that two weeks from now, that there's going to be a bank robbery. Being an omniscient god, you will know the following about this particular bank robbery. The bank robbery will take place on a Saturday afternoon. It will take place in a bank in Los Angeles. It will be robbed by three men. These men will wear masks and use automatic assault weapons. After the bank robbery, there will be an intense shootout between the bank robbers and the law enforcement officials. Now, we have described here an event that has not taken place yet. 
From the perspective of an omniscient god, these events have already occurred. The bank robbers have robbed the bank, have stolen money, and have gone into the shootout with law enforcement officials. The atheists would try to argue that this omniscience of free will is paradoxical and contradictory, and they would go on to state an argument that God being omniscient has determined what our actions would be. Their argument would go something like this. Premise 1. Humans have the choice to do either action A or action B. Premise 2. Humans choose to do action A. Premise 3. God knows you will do action A. Premise 4. As a result, you could not have chosen action B. And in conclusion, God caused action A to occur. To answer this argument, I would ask this. How does knowing something is going to happen, the same thing as causing it to happen? How is being an omniscient God, or knowing all things, the same as determining that those things will occur? If God is all-knowing, then he would know that a certain event will happen, especially for events such as a bank robbery. Now, I use this example to explain my point because many people who try to argue against God's omniscience will use an example similar to this to illustrate how human, humans who choose to do evil somehow contradict with God's omniscience. Just a reminder, according to their argument, they say that because God is all-knowing, then he knows our every action, whether good or bad, and therefore makes our free will incompatible with his omniscience, thus making human free will choices, such as a bank robbery, contradictory to God's omniscience. However, like I stated earlier, we have to keep into account that there is a fundamental difference between knowing someone is going to make a choice versus being able to do something about that particular choice. We need to go back to when I was talking about the difference between man's finite being versus God's infinite being. Because man has limited knowledge and God has omniscience, then man making decisions based on limited knowledge is not an interference with free will, nor contradicts with the coexistence of an omniscient God. Because God is infinite, then God would know what actions you, we commit when we choose to do certain actions based on our limited all knowledge. Humans would choose to exercise their free will regardless, regardless as to whether or not God knows what, what actions are we going to do or when we commit those actions, and so on and so on. Human actions such as a bank robbery would not be an argument against God's omniscience, but against God's omnipotence. Because having all knowledge is not having is not the same as having all power. The atheist would have to demonstrate how having all knowledge is the same as having all power. Now we're pretty much coming near the end, so let's recap. God is infinite while man is finite. Knowing that man will make a choice does not mean that God caused that choice to be made. And Man will exercise their free will regardless as to whether or not God knows they will exercise their free will. Because of these points, the atheist has to show how man having limited knowledge, being finite, somehow contradicts with God being omniscient and being infinite. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to make a quick final point about prayer. Many atheists who argue against God's omniscience will sometimes bring up the point of prayer. They would argue that because, because God knows our actions, our thoughts, and wishes, then it is pointless to pray, to pray to him, since he would already know what, what we would pray to him for. My response to this would be that, that is, this is not a problem for the theist, because, like I stated earlier, God is infinite, and we as humans are finite. It is the fact that we are finite that would drive us to pray to him. For if God is omniscient, then that gives us a drive to pray to him. For us being limited in knowledge would drive us to pray to a God who is all-knowing in knowledge to seek insight because of our limited knowledge. Anyway, that's the end of it. Thank you for watching.